And wicked. <laughs> Here we are with Ellie Bursko. So, do you want to just, uh, it's good to see you, by the way. Yeah, you back, too. Back in the country, thanks. And <laughs> not for long. Yeah, always <laughs> coming and going. Jet setting, it's awesome. It's awesome to see. So, kind of like to sort of roll into these. So, even before an introduction, just to tell us how you, what you've been up to for the last little while. Uh, so I, well, I went to Necker Island, Richard Branson's Island, a few weeks ago. Where, and, where is uh, that? It was amazing. in the world. It's like people say it's the British something or other. Uh, yeah, so British Virgin Islands, um, which is, I think it's pretty much still classed as the Caribbean. It's like right next to the Caribbean. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's all around that area. Um, amazing accent around there, <laughs> like some cool people. Uh, but yeah, hey, what's I, I your went... name? My name Ellie. Oh, wow, go on, Ellie. So nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> some of them I couldn't understand at first. I was like, not even smiling. <laughs> uh, but no, I spent some time in Antigua on the way back. Yeah, yeah. I spent time in Antigua on the way back as well, which is cool. So. It was just an amazing trip, not only to spend time with Richard Branson, an amazing group of entrepreneurs, but like to mentor people from the British Virgin Islands whilst we were there, to do workshops with Virgin Unite, um, to have a 15-year-old entrepreneur talk about the, the amazing uh, charity work she's doing in the world. And she's got three businesses at 15, which is crazy. Wow. And, um, and then just, you know, I'd been so busy and stressed before I left that when I was there, you know, just being on an island, all my stresses melted away. And I also, I was so inspired and motivated. Um, plus, I also got to have amazing experiences as well. So he's got an animal sanctuary there. So I got to feed the lemurs and um, the, the what baby are they? tortoises. What, are you, what are the they? giant what tortoises. The lemurs. Yeah. Uh, the lemurs kind of like it's lima pellets it's kind of like cat food but for lemurs <laughs> you get them doing tricks um, and things and like and train them like <laughs> if they sit they jump on your back <laughs> yeah they jump all over you yeah <laughs> oh no they were they were really cute and then um we have to go in with the with the males because the females like try and attack you <laughs> <laughs> they get territorial um but yeah we got yeah, exactly. Mm. But we got to snorkel over a World War Two ship that Richard Branson had just sunk recently. Um, just amazing things. And on the way back, I, I swam with stingrays as well in Antigua. So yeah. it's just like, you know, ticking off all these things off your bucket list. It was just amazing. Life, life, like memorable experiences that you won't forget, you know, these life-changing mm. experiences. That's amazing. Exactly. But let's, let's rewind a little bit because I know that you had a little bit of, there was a bit of a, it wasn't quite, easy the the lead up and, and heading over there so tell us a bit more about that yeah so i was in sydney for a week I, I live in brisbane i was in sydney for a week uh running doing a fitness expo for three days so expos are really full-on um overstimulated with talking to hundreds of people and the music and the lights and everything that was three days on my feet um before that i was running vip days and doing heaps of things in sydney and I'd already been there a week. And on the Monday, I had to change my flight. So I was supposed to come back to Brisbane for two days before going to NECA. So I was going to spend two days with my kids before I left. Uh, but I went to the consulate, the American consulate on the Monday morning um, to try and get my visa because it had been denied. And uh, I had a, an emergency appointment and they denied it again. And so in front of everyone that was about to line up to go in for their interviews, I'm crying my eyes oh, out, oh couldn't hold it back. And um, I walked out of there and I got on the phone to my partner and he looked up flights to try and get me there without going through the US. And I then was on the phone to the group organizer, the travel agent, and I had everyone just really supporting me and making sure that I got there. And so time -like, what's, within, the, what's the time frame? Like we're looking like you had to be there by when and what day are we talking this is all happening? So I was 
going, it was the Monday. I was going to fly back to Brisbane that day. I had my flight like that I was supposed to get to after the consulate. And I was going to fly back to Brisbane for a day or two and then go. But instead we found a flight for me on the Monday within an hour of leaving the consulate. I'd gone and had breakfast, checked out of my Airbnb dropped some stuff off from the expo at a guy's office that I'd only just met. So my stuff's still down there, some of my stuff. And then I was on the coach to international airport. Amazing. Carry on luggage with me that I'd had in Sydney with me the whole week. And that's what I took to NECA with me. Um, of like, a, suit, a small carry on full of dirty clothes from the week, basically. <laughs> so, uh, but I made it. <laughs> and I, I flew uh, 40 hours around the world to get there. Incredible, incredible. So, there's uh, some lessons to be learned there. It's like, don't just give mm-hmm. up the first, that, you know, the first kind of obstacle or challenge that you face. It's like, nah. nah this is, I've got my sights set on something, so I'm gonna gonna make yeah. it happen. So good on yeah, you. Yeah, there's yeah. always a way. And awesome. It's, it sounds like an amazing experience. Like I'm, uh, I'm that that is inspirational. Like I, that's something that I would love to do as well. So and and to mm-hmm. to have my peers and friends doing that sort of thing, it's, it makes it seem uh, that much more possible, you know. So yeah, totally. Thank, thanks for living the dream and, and being yeah. such an inspiration. Um, so yeah, let's just rewind it a little bit again and. Uh, why don't you tell us, tell the people who you are and what you're about and yeah, what you love, what you get up to with your time. Yeah, so my name's Ellie Bursco and I'm a business and mindset coach, um, mainly in health and wellness. My clients are personal trainers, um, but I also coach coaches and a few different industries as well. Um, and basically I help people to be able to grow their business whilst overcoming their limiting beliefs uh, and uh, so that they can continue moving forwards. Uh, once they get some great results, I uh, find a lot of people will, you know, hit this upper limit and then they'll end up shrinking backwards. So I help them to, to keep going uh, past that and, um, and keep moving forwards. That's my daughter just <laughs> <laughs> creepy little hand is coming up <laughs> <laughs> um i got two young kids as well seven year old and a four year old and um i travel a lot i traveled 16 times last year um this year i'm traveling a little bit less but still most months of the year and um and yeah just love to you know always be experiencing life and and making the most out of life beautiful so that that must yeah, so you get taken around the world through work or you just love traveling? Uh, both. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've always loved travel. Um, I was actually born in England, moved to Australia when I was four. And I've been back to England about five or six, I think it's six times now to see my family and spend time over there. I lived there in 0809 and that's where I met my partner in London. He's Portuguese. And... Um, yeah, I've just always, always loved travel, love, you know, finding out about different cultures and history and experiencing new places. I get bored being in one spot for too long. Like, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, I really, and too long is like not very long for me as well. But yeah, I do, um, I do overseas retreats for my clients. Uh, I do VIP days interstate and things like that sometimes. Uh, but for example, we're about to go in a couple of weeks as a family trip to to Southeast Asia for a month. So whilst I'm away, I'll only be doing one day a week of coaching calls with clients. And then on the other days, I'll do little bits and pieces as I, as I want, basically. Mm. Um, but the rest will just be run by my team whilst I'm away. And I'm pre-preparing stuff now, like extra content and things like that. So I'll just be able to have some really nice family time as well. Beautiful. Set set it all up now, so and automated a bit, so you can be be away, step away from for a little bit. Nice. And how long you been? And I just gonna have the important there as well. So I'm gonna have to get you to repeat that. The stage that I'm at in my business now. But it's not 
regular thing that I require a week. There are a lot of time hard to then be able to have that time off. So. Yeah, can you just repeat the that again? The important thing to note with that as well is, yeah, yeah. The important thing to note with that is that you can't just work one day a week if you want to grow your business. You know, <laughs> I'm at the stage now where I've got systems, I've got automation, I've got team so that I can work one day a week. Uh, that's one full coaching day. I will be doing bits and pieces in between that and I'll be preparing extra stuff before I go to be able to take that time off. And I just, I wanted to make that point because I think people who are trying to get to that hundred K a year mark, like you've really got to put in the work because mm -hmm. no one knows you and you've got to get, get yourself out there and you've got to overcome your own crap and you've got to really put in the effort. Um, you can't be going on holidays all the time or, you know, be doing all this stuff that's not focused on your business if you really want to succeed. So mm. I want people to think that you can just go and work one day a week, you know. <laughs> Good advice. The, it's funny that the four hour work week with Tim Ferriss it was super popular in 2008, I think it was. And everyone was like, yeah, it's like, I can only, it's amazing. I'm going to automate everything and out and send it overseas and get my, get our team of VAs to run everything. And, and it's funny you look you, if you have a listen to Tim Ferriss, even in, in the book itself, he, he mentions, or in the updated version, at least he mentions that he spends most of his time working, <laughs> you know, most of his time pushing the book, his newest book or, or getting his book written or, you know, he, he does love to travel and do fun stuff, but he does spend a shitload of time getting his, you know, especially the four hour work week in particular, he spent hours a day hustling that, you know? Yeah, totally. Like today I had Thursday is my day off. So today I had a day off, but this morning I made a sale. I was on a sales call. I, um, what else did I do? I updated some of my groups and made sure I updated, like gotten back to all my personal messages. And, um, and my, one of my team members made two sales for me today. So. Yeah. Amazing. You're multiplying yeah. yourself. Again, I feel like we're yeah. going in rewind on, on this call here a little bit. Everything's kind of time yeah. playing out in reverse. So I want to rewind a little bit and, and tell us a little bit about yeah. where you came from and, and has it always like, yeah. how long have you been at this position and how'd you get there and how'd you get here? Um, yeah. Yeah, so where are you at? You know, where did you, you said you grew up in Australia, did you? Is it Brisbane or, and then? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was born in England, moved to Brisbane when I was four. And um, so, yeah, lived in Brisbane most of my life. And I, um, I don't know how much of the story you want. Um, I was oh, actually. Intent, in, yeah, go on. As much as you want to share. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, my parents divorced when I was 17 and my dad kicked me out of home when I was 19. And I was a, I was a party girl and I was, um, my dad worked away a lot and I was craving his attention. And at the time I didn't realize that, you know, I didn't have self-worth and self-esteem and I was just calling out for attention. That led me to, you know, being a party girl and getting in trouble and, um, drugs and alcohol and, um, some not so nice relationships with guys as well. Have you, got any, have you got any crazy stories from, from, from those times that you'd care to share? Oh, God. <laughs> no one's asked me that before. Yeah, sure. Um, so one night, I just, you know, I couldn't just, I couldn't just stop at one or two. You know, I was the one that was just going all night and I would end up at random people's houses and um, I used to live on the south side. So... I came back from the valley one night, ended up at some random's house. I knew some of the people there. <laughs> and um, it was like bright daylight and we were all still partying. And the guy went down to the shops to get some stuff. And he's like, do you, do you want anything? And we're like, yeah, a tent, some rollerblades and a big. <laughs> and he's like, say, that, okay. say that list again. Sorry, I was too busy laughing. <laughs> 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 a tent, some rollerblades and some wigs. So he actually came back with those things and we set up the tent in the living room and we were rollerblading around the house with wigs on. Amazing, amazing. 
the, fu- the, <laughs> the funniest, one of the funniest things about that is that I can totally relate. <laughs> I can, t- I know exactly what, you know, I've, I've pretty much have had that almost exact same experience <laughs> in numerous <laughs> occasions. So, yeah, I can totally relate. So, so from there, from the party times, tell us. Uh, yeah, so then I, um, I hadn't, I was in an abusive relationship as well in my early twenties and, um, he just wouldn't, wouldn't leave me alone, even though I'd broken up with him, he'd still show up, you know? And so I actually, I was, I was always supposed to go back to England when I was 18, but I didn't. And so I was 20, 21, 22, I think. And I decided to go back over for a year. And so I packed up and it got me away, you know, from that whole drug scene and from the abusive boyfriend. And I went to live with my grandparents, which was <laughs> tough. They wanted to know what I was doing every day for the rest of the year. Um, so I kept kind of running off to Scotland and, uh, and couch surfing in Glasgow. And what age are you now? And what, what age are you now? I was like 20, 22. Yeah. 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 So I was, um, yeah, partying up there and hanging out with some cool people. And, um, and then I ended up, I couldn't find a job. I was working in a, in a call center in Glasgow, but it was like four pounds an hour. So it's like six or $7 an hour. It was under the award rate. They weren't even supposed to be paying us that. So what was the and, job exactly? Uh, what did the job entail exactly doing? It was a call center. I can't even remember. Were you, were you selling or were you, t- were you setting meetings or were you, were you doing fundraising? I think I would have been setting, setting meetings. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I can't Let's... even remember what the what. Was. And how long were you um, there for? Because, uh, I was only. Uh, I would have only been there for a few weeks, ah, and okay. I just ran out of money. So yeah, but I. So I worked in call centers for five years before I started my own business. So that was kind of in the middle of all of that. Yeah. Um, in Australia, I'm, I'm, and I imagine States. that would have given you some some fortitude and some ability to cold call and some some good yeah. lessons in, in overcoming objections and, and some cool little skills. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence exactly. introducing yourself to in strangers. Australia, yeah. Well in Australia, I did that um, for multiple different companies. And when I came back from overseas after that year, I, I went back to a call center as well. Um, so yeah, I, I worked for lots of different companies and my favorite one was for charities, calling their regular givers and getting or getting them to give on a monthly basis kind of thing. Um, my biggest donation I got was seventeen thousand dollars from a from a like seventy something or eighty something year old farmer in Perth. I still rem- I don't know how I remember that. Amazing. Um, but I just had amazing conversations all day every day with all these old people. <laughs> amazing. It was cool. Yeah, but then, so I, I moved down to London uh, where I found a job as a living nanny and uh, had multiple jobs down there. I was a living nanny. I worked at Sumo Salad and I also uh, was managing a team in a, in a call centre for, uh, for fundraising as well for charity in London. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I um, had some time down there and then I met my partner and we were actually uh, hitchhiking through Portugal and Spain when I found out I was pregnant. Oh, wow. And I'd only known him for three months wow. and I freaked out. <laughs> I was 22. Um, and he was, um, he was 29. And um, luckily he said to me, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. And I stayed the rest of the year. And then he followed me back to Australia. Beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so that, how did it, I imagine that would have changed your life a little bit. The, the oh, totally. So where did that yeah. take you? So falling pregnant and meeting my partner, Nuno, made me, you know, never touch drugs ever again. I don't even drink anymore. I don't binge drink at all. If I do drink, I'll have one or two and I'll, I'll be fine. Um, and just, yeah, he completely changed my life. And, and I decided to change my life as well, obviously. And so, yeah, when we moved back, we literally had no money. I was working in the call centre he wasn't allowed to work because he was on a tourist visa and I worked until I was 39 weeks pregnant because I, that was the only money we had. And 
I know you, we couldn't afford a car, so I used to walk to work at 39 weeks pregnant as well. <laughs> Crazy. Um, yeah. And then I, um, so I stopped working there. Um, Centrelink uh, didn't, didn't come by until a little while later. So we were really stressed out about that. Just for the, um, uh, just for the listeners and, and viewers who don't know what Centrelink is, can you just give us some context? Yeah, so there? like welfare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I usually say welfare for anyone in the US. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so that didn't come in straight away. <clears throat> when it did, we were only getting like $500 a week. 300 was for our rent. We were living off $50 a week for food. And uh, we had to walk everywhere um, to get wherever we needed to go. And, and you guys um, are young, right? You guys are, you know, 20-somethings. Yeah, yeah. Well, Nuno was probably 30 by that stage and I was 23. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, it was at that time where we actually got a letter one day in the, in the mail and I, I say this is my turning point. I remember getting this letter that Nuno's visa was denied and I was on the floor just crying, thinking, why does all this bad stuff keep happening to us? And, um, and we thought our family was going to be split apart, you know? and with with a newborn baby and i decided at that time that i you know life doesn't happen to me i can take control of this mm. and i can decide to create a better life for myself and my family and that's when i enrolled in a, my personal training course um when my daughter was three months old i started that and so i used to express milk for her and get on my bike and cycle down to the classes and uh I, the first week out of PT college, I started my own business. Most other people in the course were, um, were just either doing nothing with the course or were going to work in it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I decided, you know, I don't want to work for someone else. I don't want to be working 40 hours a week, earning five, $600 a week and having my daughter in full time daycare. I didn't see the point in that. Yeah. And um, so I, that's when I started my first business. And that's that, uh, the turning point you said. So the visa, what happened with the visa? How did, did you have to sponsor? How, how did that, all that stuff work? Yeah, so it, it was denied because they only sent us an email that we didn't respond to, but we never got the email. So, um, so we went through a whole review process and they ended up giving it to him. So it all worked okay. out. Okay. So it came through in the end. Amazing. So that was how long yeah. ago? How long ago was that? We're in, we're in 2017 now. So. Yeah. So that was uh, around 2011, I think. Cool. And uh, yeah. the first business was about a personal training. You were training people like PT stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so after I had my daughter, I lost 29 kilos in seven months, which is more than what I'd put on. Mm. And uh, I looked around, you know, before I lost that weight, I looked around for a mum's boot camp with babysitting included, mm. um, with a cool community feel and like-minded women, and I just couldn't find it. So That's amazing, by the way. Good work on, the, on getting that, hitting that goal there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. And... I, well, I lost the weight myself, obviously, and then I wanted to fill that gap in the market for what I'd been looking for. Mm. So I started Mum's Boot Camps with babysitting included in the parks. was the first one to do that in Brisbane. No idea what I was doing when I started. <laughs> I, I was making like $50, $100, $200 a week tops, and it was mainly just friends and word of mouth and um, like Groupon deals and things like that. I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> and uh, then I found a business coach on Facebook and the first thing he wanted me to do with him was a thousand dollars. And, you know, you could have said a hundred thousand dollars to me at that time. It just felt like that much. Yeah. Um, and, and I didn't have any money. So I just, I paid it off little bit by little bit um, as I took action and he gave me steps, you know, to make some money. And, um, I actually, with, with his help and, and my own, you know, hard work, uh, I took that business to a hundred grand in a year and 200,000 in under two years. Amazing. And 
And that was still most of that time without having a car running to all my classes with my daughter in the pram and the equipment underneath the pram. It's like, imagine I had a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how I lost all that weight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So that was, so some of the, that was a kind of a sweeping kind of, all right, that's what happened, but let's get a bit deeper into that. What was some of yeah. the, what was some of the mindset? What was some of the, I know you mentioned that there was that turning point where you said, okay, life can happen to you or I, I can actually control what happens here. Um, so mm. t- tell us some of the ins and outs of what, how are you thinking? How, like what, what makes you go, all right, cool. I just have to do this. I have to walk with the kid and have to express and have to implement. I, I imagine there's some, some specifics in there that, that uh, would be really helpful for, for some of our listeners. Yeah, sure. So uh, before I started the business, I think that drive just came from, you know, uh, that, that was just my personality, you know, and I, I just had this strong desire to not go and work for someone else. I just, I can't, yeah, I, I can't follow rules. I don't like people telling me what to do. And I just couldn't imagine. I didn't feel like, and this isn't a dig at anyone who has to do this. I understand people make that choice or they have to, but I just thought that for me, it wouldn't be right having a kid and putting her in full-time daycare. Mm. And so I, I was like, okay, well, what else, what else can I do? You know? And because of the journey that I'd been through, the personal training just seemed like the logical option. Mm. Um, but then like after that, so I think it really comes from, you know, your personality and just having that strong reason why and that drive. Um, but also both of my parents were in business. I've, I've grown up with two entrepreneurial parents, you know, mm-hmm. so I got strong work ethic from them and, uh, you know, that didn't really click until about a year ago. I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So t- tell um, us what, what strong work ethic is for, the, for those of us who struggle with it. Or to struggle mm, with it so, to, so, yeah, tell us what that looks like. And, you know, so something that is for someone with strong work ethic, I mean, I imagine that things, some things are just a given or that, oh, that's normal. Of course, you work 12 hours a day. Of course, you, you put in that extra mile. Of course, you don't just waste time. Like this is like uh, a no brainer to someone with strong work ethic, whereas people who are trying to develop yeah. work ethic, that, that, that seems way out of their universe, you know? Yeah, totally. Well, I think there's positives and negatives to, to that. Uh, for example, so with my dad, he couldn't stop working and he still can't. He's 53 now. And he still can't say no to a job, you know, and he's just taken on another company. So he's just increased his workload. And I'm like, you've got all these people working for you. Shouldn't you be doing less? <laughs> it's like, right. um, I think I've kind of outgrown him and, and learned that lesson way before he has, you know? Mm-hmm. So there's the, the negative side of that, I guess, in a way is that I did used to have that hustle mentality and I still get thrown back into that sometimes. Um, but I think that is just part of who I am as well. And I don't want to push that to the side. I think that's a good thing as well, as long as you have balance. Mm. And I don't think balance means that every day is balanced, but that you have, you know, peaks and troughs and you have some weeks you might be working really hard and then you might have a week off, you know? So balance is, is what it means to, to each individual. Mm. Um, but for me, it's it's good you asked that actually because yeah there's a lot of things I do and I'm like don't it, doesn't everyone do this like isn't yeah. this normal yeah. um, you know I'll I'll wake up in the morning and I'm I'm thinking about my business and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but I'm just constantly thinking about business thinking about my clients how I can get them better results um, like I said today even on my day off I made a sale um, my assistant made a couple of sales I did a bit of work it's you know 9 40 at night right now when I'm I'm doing this because yeah. you know it doesn't feel like work this stuff it's what fills me up yeah. and um, a good example as well we were in Portugal over Christmas And I see business stuff everywhere. So we were at, uh, there was this castle and it'd been all done up with all these Christmas markets and games and people dressed up. Um, Someone dressed up as the Mad Hatter for some reason. The the (laughs) Mad Hatter was at all these Christmas markets. I don't know why. And um, I saw someone stand and they had quite um, 
like expensive chocolates. And I pointed it out to Nuno and I'm like, oh, that's really good branding. Look at the way they've set up like the stand and they've done this and they've done that. That looks like really high quality. Yeah. And that just kind of sparked ideas for me to write about, you know, like that's just how my brain is thinking all the time. <laughs> yeah. So it's a high value for you. And, and what I got from that is like, it's a, it's definitely at the top of your list of, of values, you know, business and, and building business and serving people. Um, but also that mm-hmm. it's, it's almost an obsession um, in, in, in a healthy way because it can, it can provide you with fulfillment and provide you, you, you with a bit of freedom, you know, financial space freedom. Um, and, and it's good you yeah. mentioned that balance as well, because there's, there's no point in, in hustling, hustling and making all this cash money uh, and then not having any time to actually do anything with it and enjoy, enjoy yourself and, and, and your time with the family and such. Exactly. Like today, uh, I went and had a massage, which ended up turning into acupuncture. He's like, oh, I'll just give you some actu- acupuncture as well. No extra cost. I'm like, okay. Um, and then I ended up having to go pick my daughter up from school. And then I took her back to, uh, took her back to the shops with me and we went and got spa pedicures. And she's only seven. She's never had one before. And she's like, thank you for doing that for me. And it was just really nice to spend that time with her. I've spent time with both the kids tonight. We watched Finding Dory on Netflix. And um, I spent time with my little boy this morning as well, just reading books with him and, and cuddling him. So it was really nice balance today. Super important. That's, that's, yeah, I can imagine they're going to have a pretty fun life <laughs> with, with parents yeah. like you guys. Um, my daughter's traveled to like, I think, 13 countries already, something like that. And she's, um, she's only seven. She needs some new pages in her passport soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah she'll have another four ticked off in in a couple of weeks <laughs> amazing amazing cool thanks for sharing that um is there anything else mindset wise that is in terms of like overcoming kind of obstacles and re- the thing that i hear a lot is like resistance people letting resistance stop them and there's all this build up of resistance and kind of i want the thing but there's all this kind of whatever it is this this whether it's outside forces or inside forces like you said um earlier yeah. I don't know if it was in the, while we were on uh, on the air, but in terms mm. of helping people get out of their own way, you know, like there's that internal yeah. dialogue or that belief stuff or that says that they can't or that they can't be great or, you know, is there anything specific that has helped you with, with that stuff? With getting, you know, getting, because yeah. all of us have it, you know, it's, there's not yeah, you know, yeah. successful people and go, oh, they don't have it. So <laughs> it's just a different way of dealing with it, you know. And, and you have it every time you step up into something unknown, like it's like, Oh, this, this shit again, <laughs> you know, it's like, you never get rid of it. I think you just peel another layer off and go deeper and you're able to bounce back from things so much quicker or the little things just don't matter anymore. But I guess going back from that, um, you know, I think we can decide to struggle in life or we can decide to to just go with the flow you know and the more that we sit and stagnate and don't move forwards the more that voice in your head gets worse and that's when the overwhelm and the fear and the anxiety takes over and it's like for example with live streams i have a lot of my clients going i'm too scared to do a live stream and they sit there going but i don't know what to say and do people even want to listen to me and i'm not good enough and you know so and so is better than me and just story gets worse and worse and worse then if they just pick up the phone and do it they're like put a message in my group afterwards and they're like oh i did my first live stream it wasn't that bad you know so it's just we've got to take action and confidence builds with action and it's like when i was on NECA, for example i had those voices the first day or two I was like, oh, all these people are better than me. And I, you know, they're doing so much, like they must be making so much more money than me and have achieved so much more amazing things than I have. And I don't belong here and, you know, all this stuff. But because I was so busy, I didn't stay still. That didn't have chance to take over. And I still kept on. I put myself out there. I tried new things. I was doing all this stuff. And I opened up to a few people, I think, on day two. And they were like, oh, yeah, I was feeling the same way. And I, I thought you were really inspiring. You've <laughs> sold a business. I, I haven't done that. And, you know, all these things that they were feeling as well. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, well, I'm no different to everyone else here. Everyone is just, you know, everyone is the same. And, 
you know, we all have our, our strengths and weaknesses and our skills and our unique things and, and stories to share with the group as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think, I guess, going back to what you're asking before as well, in that beginning phases of my business, I did a lot of not just strategy but an action, but a lot of personal development. And there was, um, in those early days, and, and beyond as well, there was a lot of work on, you know, noticing my strengths and weaknesses, noticing my stories from the past, um, forgiving people from the past, um, the ex-boyfriend and my mom and my dad and, you know, letting go of stories like, oh, well, my parents' divorce is what made me use drugs. And it's like, well, no, I chose to take drugs, you know, and it's like dropping those stories and changing the perspective so that you can be in the present and come from that place and, you know, just go out there and take action from a place of um, just being 100% present and wanting to help people rather than attaching all your crap and all these stories to to that Mm-mm-mm. amazing it's like yeah it's like almost like you said getting over yourself or you know it's like it's like the story yeah the story is whatever you want it to be at the end of the day you can one thing can happen mm-hmm. to multiple different people you 10 different people the same exact thing can happen it but 10 you have 10 different ways of looking at it you know and and the person who looks at it as like you said, a struggle, they're going to struggle. A person who looks at it as, as an opportunity is going to go off oh, and run with it and, and turn it into a business or turn it into a way to yeah, go out Exactly. Yourself. And I think in life we tend to focus on the negatives, and I've done this a lot in the past where, you know, there'll be one bad thing that happens and you feel like it's like the whole world is over and I'm a failure and everyone hates me and my life sucks. And then it's like, Oh, but I just signed up five new clients <laughs> and I just had amazing, uh, you know, amazing connection with my partner this week. And I just took the kids out and I've lost two kilos and you know, all this amazing stuff. And you're like, Oh yeah, that one thing doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, yeah. So I think that comes back to, you know, daily gratitude and journaling and meditation and, just teaching yourself to focus on the positives rather than the negatives. And, mm. and over time that just becomes easier as well. And when you, you know, obviously it's a bit cliche, but what you get is what you focus on. If you start doing that, then you'll start seeing more amazing things and surrounding yourself with more amazing people and putting that energy out there so that you bring those amazing opportunities into your life as well, instead of kind of repeating that negative cycle. Mm. Hundred percent, and I feel that there's an underlying message that's coming through the the whole time you've been talking from from the beginning of this call. Um, that it's almost like self awareness. Like the more self awareness we cultivate, and and honesty with ourselves, then the more we're able to actually do something about our situation. If we're in denial, that where you know maybe we're we're not if we're not getting the results we want like if we're not living the kind of life that we want to live obviously there's some level of of doubt there or there's some level of i don't believe i can have it or shame or whatever it might be that's the story that's playing Mm -hmm. um so it's like okay let's look at look at that you know and and the more that we are serving in action less in our heads i think i shared something earlier today it's like if perfectionism seems to be something and it's the resistance stuff that i've been talking about that comes up um, when that comes up, mm. it's like act now, think later. It's similar to what you were saying. It's like someone who hasn't, oh, who, who I hasn't do. Online, it's like, just act, act, act. <laughs> you can think about it later. You can think about how it's going to happen or how, you know, you can, yeah, all the fears, doubts, and stuff that the noise. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal with yeah. that. But we'll, we'll do it after we've taken a bunch of action. And, and then, and then, we totally. can, you know. and that's what I always do. And then I'm like, like, oh, that, like, you know, I put it up and I don't even look at my old stuff because I just put stuff out there. Whereas most people do the opposite. They're like, oh, I've got to make this perfect. But it's not about, I think perfectionism and procrastination are just surface level excuses. We tell ourselves for something deeper and the something deeper is usually like, oh, I'm going to be judged or, you know, I'm not good enough or all those kinds of limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. Um, someone actually said to me yesterday, uh, progression, not perfection. Yeah. And it's like, you know, putting something out there is better than nothing because in your own head is not going to help anyone. You know, just keeping it in your head is not going to help anyone um, yeah. change their lives. It's a big one. I, I think I shared that with someone earlier today, even as our progression over perfection <laughs> with, with the, with yeah. the seven-week seven guys. 
That's amazing. Thanks for sharing. I, I'm um, going to wrap up pretty soon. I just want to know what's exciting you at the moment. I know you've just had a bunch of inspiration coming from NECA like, and you came back with a bunch yeah. of inspiration, kind of a bigger vision. Just talk to us about future. What's happening in the future for you? What's it, what are you currently involved in? Yeah. So I, I was so inspired and motivated coming back from NECA and I just got so many ideas there. Uh, that I tried to start doing everything all at once and now it's simplified. But so some of those things that I, I'm going to be doing will probably be next year now rather than, you know, straight away. Um, for example, I'm going to create a, a program for year 11 and 12 students to teach them about my mindset, money management, personal development, entrepreneurship, leadership, and actually help them to be able to launch a business by the end of the, the course. Amazing. Um, so is, really, that a, really, is that like a one-term thing or a year-long thing? or A semester, so two terms. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So, yeah. so necessary. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I wish I was taught about money in school. Like, I, I, I had good sense around money from a young age, and I've been working since I was 12. But, um, yeah, I think it's very much needed. And you know, they don't have to go to uni if they don't want to. There are other, other options. That's exciting. Uh, another thing, yeah. Um, another thing for down for next year in January, one of my old clients has a children's home in Kenya. And so I'm going to go and speak with her team over there and also speak in some high schools and in the slums and talk to them around mindset and business as well and hopefully start to end that poverty cycle for some of the families there so that that really fills me up and i didn't know exactly how i wanted to do that but i've always known since i was a teenager that i wanted to volunteer in third world countries so that's really really exciting that's super exciting yeah, yeah. that's a couple but of now so, pardon that's a couple of cool things you're up to it's, it's super exciting yeah yeah but then I realized, you know, I don't need to be doing all these things straight away. So now my focus right now is I've been super, super focused on just consistent marketing, building team and, um, and systems and automation and just the sales are really flowing. Like I think we've made about 15 sales in the last two weeks. Um, and most of them are, are, are big um, sales as well. So, yeah, it's been, been really good to just kind of simplify and just put those systems in place and follow the plan. Crushing it. Awesome. And uh, the question I always ask uh, is getting in flow. Like, you know, my thing is flow. Uh, living life in the flow zone is the name of the podcast, is the name of, of the, the Facebook group that I run, um, the name of the book I'm about to release. So when I say living life in, in flow or in that, you know, in the zone or in the flow zone, what does that mean to you and how do you like to ensure that you get in that zone? I think flow for me is just, um, you know, like I was talking about the balance before going with what feels right in the moment. So if that flow means that you need to have a day off to just chill the fuck out and binge watch Netflix, then, then that's flow on that day. Other times flow might be, you know, mm. that hustle mentality of like making a heap of sales and getting a heap of shit done. Mm. Um, so that's the way that I see flow. Mm. Um, I do think that I need to do get into doing more meditation and stuff again and chilling out a bit more. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think, I think flow is just going, going with what feels right in the moment whilst also sticking to the plan as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And something that just popped into my head then was, um, Coming from NECA, you, had, you, you obviously spoke with, with Mr. Branson or Sir Branson, I think it is these days. And um, were yeah. there any kind of specific questions you asked him or questions he asked you or kind of tidbits of, of gold that you picked up from, from your interactions with him that I'm sure people would be interested um, to know about? Yeah, one big thing that really stood out for me because I think it's kind of where I'm at at the moment, he said, you want to take yourself out of your business as quickly as possible. Because when you take yourself out of business, then you're able to, you know, create another business or go and do these bigger picture things like me speaking in Kenya and doing, you know, doing these different projects. Because if you don't do that, what I see a lot of people doing is they attach their whole identity to their business, which is what I used to do. Mm -hmm. They feel like they've got to do everything and 
just created another job for themselves rather than creating something that works for them. Mm. And so that really stood out for me when he said that. Um, I thought that was really cool. And his little catchphrase as well, screw it, just do it or let's do it. It's like, it's just around, you know, taking action and stepping out of that comfort zone. And, um, you know, even if everyone tells you not to, or it's crazy or no one's ever done it before, it doesn't mean that it's a stupid idea or that you can't do it. Um, so yeah, but I noticed other than that, I noticed like he's very, very humble He's very patient. He's very a very good listener. And I actually tried, I, I do talk a lot, as you can probably see from this podcast, but it was great to be in a position where, you know, I wasn't the leader for once mm. and I wasn't the one doing all the talking. I was actually sitting there listening and just soaking up his, his wisdom and just mm. being a part of that amazing thing. I didn't, there were some louder personalities and people who did kind of jump in. And I thought, you know, and I've read this in his books. There's no point in saying something just for the sake of it. Just so I actually, the space spoke, or whatever, yeah, yeah I, I actually spoke a lot less than I normally do and just let him talk and, and soaked up his wisdom. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Being around these kind of people who have caused the created a, fair amount of impact in the world you know you definitely have that osmosis you know i'm a big believer in mm. you are uh, who, who you surround yourself with and, and that we're highly inf- influential inf- impressionable um people yeah. um and yeah. that you so the people and the environments that you surround yourself with and, and that's even internally the thoughts that fill your mind i'm a big believer that they it, <clears throat> are, are impressed on us you know so <clears throat> surrounding yourself with people yeah. who who want to win and who want to get ahead and cause create some sort of impact some meaningful impact in the world and and for me that's who I want to be around that's why I'm 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 here with you and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing like even working with the clients they they're wanting to to enhance themselves and wanting to to create the lives that they want that, that, that they dream of and such so for me I think that's a, yeah. a ma- massively big takeaway just from you making sure that you got to neck it and be surrounded by these entrepreneurs who want to take it to that next level and really want to create a massive impact. So yeah. yes, that's a big takeaway yeah. for me um, from that for sure. So last, so thanks for that, for you, for doing it, for living it, like I said before, but also uh, just lastly, what are you, how do people get in touch with you? Give us your, your, your what do you, you have anything at the moment that you want to um, plug or yeah, share with the people, um, let us know. Cool. Um, so anyone can feel free to add me on Facebook. Just shoot me a message as well so I know who the hell you are. Um, uh, so it's just Ellie Bursco, um, which you'll have my name on here, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah what, is there any so links Facebook. specifically you want to share? Yeah. Is I, it Instagram? Is it is it Snapchat? Like, what, what, what are your main things? Facebook's probably the best. I'm on Facebook the most. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, just Ellie Bursco on Facebook and the website's elliebursco.com.au as well. So I can I can give that to you. I've got a free ebook that a lot of people have downloaded as well, which is how to get your business to 10K a month and beyond. So happy to give that out as a freebie to anyone as well. Beautiful. And, and very lastly, is there any kind of, yeah, parting, either if it's parting wisdom or if it's a question you want to ask the people to get them thinking along a certain way or, yeah, any, what do you want to leave them with as we sign off here? Hmm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, I guess this is something that's been on my mind a little bit lately. If I was to ask a question, it's like, do you think that you are, so to, to go out to everyone, do you feel that you are currently 100% committed to, to your goals? Do you feel like you're giving 100% effort to your goals? If not, why not? If yes, awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. La. Yeah, so thanks again. And uh, maybe we'll do it again sometime in the future. Keep rocking, keep kicking those goals. Uh, you're doing amazing work in, in the world. So we'll see each other soon. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You know what to do. Rock on.